Hey, please introduce yourself, state your name and DOC number for the record. Jeffrey Scott Bishop, 714-124. All right, Mr. Bishop. My name is Brendan Kelsey. Along with me is Mr. Tony Marabella. Ms. Pete Freeman will be your panel. Explain the process to you. Read some information to the record. Have a parole interview. Ask you some questions. You can respond at the end. You can make a statement. We'll take a vote. You understand the process? Yes, sir. We have uh, Heather Warner and Tammy Scheisler. Uh, Scheisler uh, will be here. We'll speak at the appropriate time. Jeffrey Malchek, DO DOC number 714-124. You are a second class offender, parole eligibility date 3, 26, 2024,20, good time 2, 22, 2025, <clears throat> full term 12, 27, 2030, nine year sentence, <clears throat> jumping bail, possession of methamphetamines. <clears throat> Does that sound correct? Yes, sir. It's a nine year sentence. All right, answer Mr. Freeman, please. Okay, Mr. Michal. Uh, how old are you? Uh, just turned 60 today. Oh, happy birthday. Uh, how long have you been in jail on these charges? I've been in jail for, I believe, 22 months. It's shorter two years. Okay. All right. Um, tell me about the drug problem. Uh, just to... Uh, I guess an addiction and uh, just basically was hanging around wrong people, making bad, bad choices. And uh, just got caught up in the drug game. As a user, not really anything else. Okay, so uh, you consider yourself a drug addict? Uh, I've had addiction problems in the past. Uh, right now, I've, as far as being addicted, I believe right now I've, I've beaten the problem. I've, Done some soul searching and pretty much a too old for all that mess. Uh, what classes have you taken to try to help you with drugs? Well, I, I applied for class four or five times. I've written letters and they told me that I didn't qualify because uh, I was low risk and that I had a low tire score. And I have a, a letter from them that when I, one of my letters I wrote them, they wrote me back that telling me that I didn't qualify for classes. They told me that basically me my uh, job history would be my re-entry, what I was told. Are you in work release right now? Yes, sir. And I've, I've been working pretty much since I've been here. Okay, how long have you been there? I've been here for right at 16 months, 15 or 16 months. How much like money have you saved? Uh, right now in my account, I've got like $1,600. You've been doing with all that money you were making. Well, my see, that was it. My first job, I was only making ten dollars an hour working at ECS Electric, which mm -hmm. I've been doing electrical and refrigeration since like 1987. And uh, but yeah, I wasn't making no money, and I worked there for like 10 months. I was making like I was bringing home 91 dollars a week there. Right. And so it was kind of rough, you know. But then uh I was able to transfer jobs and I'm working at Brass. Incorporated right now at a machine shop, and I've learned pretty much learned to be a machinist, and I'm finally starting to make a little money. So I was able to put up a lot of money just the cost of groceries and you know uh, utilities and supplies like that you have to purchase here. Yeah. And your housing fees, your housing fees. I was paying on my new job. I was paying the maximum of four fifty one a week. Right. Uh, I know all work release. Yes. Sir. <laughs> So uh, it's put it up, but I was just starting to things just starting to rolling, rolling because I haven't been with this job very long, but I just got through their training program. So I was just going through their full work schedule to work in overtime and everything. So I was just now starting to be able to put up a little money. Okay. Did you uh you ever receive treatment on the outside? Uh yes, sir. I've been to uh Lacassine, uh Louisiana Sanctuary once and then Years ago, I went to uh, Red River. Red River, okay. Uh, what made you relapse? Any particular thing? What's your triggers? What? Uh, to be straight up honest, I guess it'd probably be just hanging around the wrong women. <laughs> wrong women. <laughs> I'm just being honest. I didn't. 
other than that, I've, I've always worked, I've always made a living, I've always paid my bills and uh, just kind of got off. I guess after my second divorce, I uh, kind of strayed a little bit. And... Okay. Um, you know, I look at your supervision record and it, it's, it's bad. I mean, you've had four periods of supervision, all of them have been revoked. Uh, you have one child. Do you have contact with your child? Yes, sir. He just graduated from LSU. Great. Good. 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 Uh, what was the jumping bail charge? Did you just leave the state or what? No, sir. I, all I did was miss court. I'm not exactly sure why they put a felony jumping bail charge on there, but all I did was just miss court. And then my, uh, when I missed court, my uh, uh, bondsman, I guess, revoked a bond on it. Okay. Uh, community attitude, uh, district attorney is uh, opposed, says you hadn't served enough time. The sheriff is opposed. It's too early for release. Unopposed is Heather warned. Uh, she, uh, that's your sister, thinks you're doing well. Uh, where are you going to live? Where are you going to work if you get out? Well, I've got it set up right now that, uh, when I get out, I'm going to go to my sister's house and take care of my loose ends. And then uh, where I'm working right now, Brask Incorporated here in Sulphur, I've got to set up to put a, a, a camper down there in an RV spot and go continue working at Brask Incorporated. Okay. Um, uh, why do you think I should take a chance on you? Well, basically, I'm I'm old enough to know better. I thought I just made some bad decisions, and uh, I can be a you know a functioning member of society. I've I've been working hard my whole life, and I've got plenty of different trades I've worked at, mainly refrigeration and electrical. But I've learned this new trade, machine shop, and you know I, I really don't violate when I'm in here. I haven't done any drugs. I haven't violated in any way. Uh, the law, pretty much a law-abiding citizen. I've just made a couple of bad choices. Okay. Uh, you're low risk, moderate needs. Have you ever had any write-ups? No, sir, never. Warden, you have any comments on uh, Mr. Michelle? No, sir, there's not. I went through the file. There's no write-ups or anything like that. And he does work for Brask. He's been doing good as far as working. Uh, uh, no complaints. He gets up and goes every day, and he's uh, don't try to call in and like a lot of them do. So he's he's there pretty good, yes, sir. Okay. Do Do y'all have any uh, educational classes over there? We do. We have living in balance, anger management, and AAA. But um, uh, I I I read his letter. He does have a letter trying to get in. I don't know why they didn't accept him in. I really don't understand that, but. Uh, answer Mr. Mayor Bell's question, please. I've got just a, a couple of questions, Mr. Bishop. Uh You indicate that you've got a, a your drug addiction. Okay. Uh, what about alcohol? Uh, no, sir. I've I've quit drinking probably. Uh, it's probably been at least ten years ago, anyways. Okay. Well, let, let's talk about that. I mean, we've got a bunch of DWIs. Those all out of the drug related or alcohol related? Uh, those were alcohol. Those were back. Back in the 90s, I believe, or, or prior to that. Well, 99 is your first one. They, they go beyond that. So uh, how often were you drink? I mean, you're an alcoholic. We can agree on that? Uh, back in the day, I was. Like I said, I'm pretty much, I've, I've quit drinking at least 10 years ago. Well, you, but but you, 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 you substituted that for another addiction. How did you get hooked on drugs? Well, like I said, it pretty much, I guess, was a, an addiction problem. Well, I, I, I'm concerned. I mean, you've gone through some very good programs. Red River had an excellent program back then. Uh, yes, have you had any long-term substance abuse since you've been in prison? No, sir. I haven't done, I haven't used not one time. Since I understand I've been in you're in prison. And I understand you can get drugs in prison, but it's right. a heck of a lot easier on the outside. 
you had a lot of trouble staying away from drugs back then and alcohol. So tell me what your plan is to stay sober if we let you out. Uh, church, church and family. You know, uh, I've got a good family support system. And I, like I said, I, I, I can't blame it on the, the woman I was with, but I hooked up with somebody and I strayed and I didn't. I didn't use my family support. Hook up with that woman in 1999 when you got all these DWIs, when you got all these other arrests. I mean, you can't blame that on this woman. No, sir. No, sir. That was my question to you is how are you going to stay sober? You tell me church and family. How is your church and your family going to keep you sober? Because of either I'm going to be working or with them. You, you didn't know. work when you were out before? Pardon me? You didn't work when you were out before? Yes, sir. I did work. And I, uh, one of the things that I've done before? Yes, sir. I had my family support. When I was working before, I did I did refrigeration a lot, and I worked in a lot of the bars, and that's why right now I'm, I'm trying to work in a place that I will go to work, be in a shop, and work my at ten or twelve hours a day, and then go home. Before, when I was doing refrigeration, I was like mm -hmm. I said, working, in a, working on the cooler, and then they hand you a beer. And let you know, me stop. Just being busy is going to distract you from drinking and going back to drugs. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. That and, and you know, like, oh, pardon me. What are your triggers? The only trigger I've heard you talk about is this woman. What are your triggers? I mean, what happens when you get out and you can't get a job? What happens when times get tough? What's going to stop you from going back to using drugs? My family. I mean, I've, I've gotten older and I've, I've, like I said, I've made bad choices. My idle times used to be my, my, my triggers. Are you familiar with the 12 steps? Yes, sir. Have you practiced them at all, anytime, ever? Uh, it's, been a, it's been a while since I've been in that. What's the while? Uh, since, basically since my last rehab I went through. It's, it's been a while, Lack of scene, Louisiana Sanctuary. And how long ago was that? Uh, I'm not exactly sure. It was. Five plus years, probably. Okay, thank you. Thanks. All right. We'll hear from Miss Heather Warner. I'd like to make a brief statement, Miss Heather. Um, I've been through a lot of stuff with Jeff. Um, you guys read my letter, but I'm truly amazed. I mean, astonished at the difference I see in him now than what he was like two years ago just amazingly different his his uh demeanor is completely different his eyes are clean he talks to me about the scriptures he reads them every day he's talked to our bishop he wants to get active in the church he wants to help in the church and you were asking well what are you going to do to keep from doing that's what he's going to do um, and there's a church, our church is all over the whole world. There's one in Lake Charles, there's one here. So it doesn't matter where he's at, there will be that church uh, structure for him. And um, we are uh, members of the Church of Jesus Christ, Latter-day Saints, and we have something called the Word of Wisdom. And all of us strive to live that principle of you know, no alcohol, no drugs, no, not even caffeine. And, and so they will, they will help him. They'll be his support system. They, they, he can call any of them day or night. And so, you know, you ask how he's going to help. That's what's going to help him. And, and, um, you know, if rehabilitation is really the point, then I think further incarceration really is not, is going to hinder him more than help him. Um, re-enter society all right thank you for your comment miss tammy yes um i know my brother has done some things that are wrong and um and i know he knows that but again i think it'll serve no purpose to keep keeping him incarcerated because number one he's not violent he's not going to hurt anybody into society and when he's released he'll be able to go to work to be able to pay restitution to the people uh that y'all said he's he's hurt and uh he'll be able to pay his fines back to society i will he he will be a productive citizen 
again, and he can help his extended family in our community. And again, like my sister said, he, he has us as a support system and he will definitely have our bishop from our church. And if you would like to call him, you're at leisure to do that also. But I can see a big difference in my brother. I've seen him addicted and I've seen him. And I am so happy to have my brother back when I go to visit him and be able to talk to him and, and see my little brother again. And I just wish you'd please grant him early release so he can become part of our family again and be able to uh, go back to church. All right, and thank I, you so much. Thank you, thank for, you your, for your time. Uh, Jeffrey, we'll hear from you now. You'd like to make a statement on your behalf? Uh, yes, sir. I'm just asking for the chance to be paroled, to, as you said, to get back in society and to get back in my family's life. Uh, I've made some bad choices and followed the drug route and the, the party and then the wild women and all. And, you know, uh, my, my first marriage was 17 years. And uh, like I said, I have a, one wonderful son from it. My second marriage started okay. And then it went to the, uh, did, did, uh, that's when he was talking about the alcohol addiction with me and, and my wife. And we had problems and we tried to do the rehab thing and we ended up splitting up and went our ways and uh, uh you know I've, I've rebounded back and forth and i've never you know my family this time man my family is really and they've always been there for me it's been me the one that's been the hard-headed one that was trying to trying to be 25 years old all my life or something you know and i've i've you know really this sit down has, has done me good i'm not going to say it hasn't uh it was probably good for me to to be arrested and put in put in jail. It it probably saved my life and got me back back on track with the my family and the scriptures and you know and and trying to be a positive role in my my son's life. Which, like I said, he's done well. Me and my first wife communicate all the time. And like I said, my son just just graduated from LSU and just got his commission in the Air Force. And uh, I just want to be a, be able to be there in, in my family's life and and to work and and you know take care of my business and do what I, I'm supposed to be doing, especially at my age. All right, thank you, sir. Thank you so much for your comments. Yes, sir. Thank you. All right, have a fair to vote. Yes, sir, Mr. Freeman. Okay, uh, Mr. Michalk, uh You know your problems is drugs and alcohol. Yes, sir. And I don't really feel that you've come to grips with that yet. You, uh, you know, I don't really think in your mind you think you're an addict, and obviously you are an addict. Yes, sir. Uh, I think you need a little bit more programming. Uh, I'm going to ask the work release to put you in any classes that deal with drugs, alcohol, and uh you need to try to attend the AA program they have there. Um, you've only served two years of a nine-year sentence, uh, and you have poor supervision. My vote today is to deny. Mr. Mayor Bello. Thank you, uh, Mr. Chairman. Uh, you know, you've got a wonderful support system. Your family is, is behind you. Uh, you, you come a long way. I, I think you you have a mindset now where treatment might help you, where yes. it hasn't in the past. Uh, uh, church and family can't keep you sober. They can help you. They can love you. They can work with you, but they can't keep you sober. You're going to have to keep yourself sober. Uh, yes. I don't think you're ready yet, because if we let you out now, if I voted to let you out right now, I think you'd be coming back before long. Uh, my vote is a little bit different than uh, Mr. Freeman. My vote would be to grant you conditionally upon completing a long-term substance abuse program in the Department of Corrections. Uh, Steve Hoyle, for example. Uh, and then when you are released, uh, to have three AA meetings per week, random drug testing, uh, and uh, a curfew at least for the first 90 days. 
That would be my vote. All right. Uh, you have one vote to grant and one vote to deny. Uh, you do have, you definitely have a drug problem. You definitely have a drug and alcohol problem, and you're right. You know, it's left up to you to to to, to make that right because you're going to come out, go out, and have the same stresses and the same problems that you had. You're not going to be able to stay away from everybody doing drugs and alcohol. You know, you do have a great support system, uh, but staying there probably is is not going to do you good. I I would agree to grant you to the long-term substance abuse program, Steve Hall Intensive Substance Abuse Program. It's a nine-month program or six-month program, depending on how you work it. Uh, and after you successfully complete that, you have NAA three times a week, random drug screens, and a curfew from 9P to 6A. Here's an opportunity for you. It hadn't worked in the past, but this is the best program we have in the, in the state, and it is, is done very well. This is a great opportunity for you to learn and and really, uh, you know, help yourself out because we don't want to see you again. So two votes to grant, one to deny. Today, your parole is being granted to the Steve Hall Intensive Substance Abuse Program. Good luck to you. Okay.